This week on Wheel of Science, we're talking quantum physics. Look at me, Neil. I'm all entangled, like quantum-like. No, Chuck, you're just entangled. <laughs> Welcome to Wheel of Science. Hey, everybody, welcome to Wheel of Science. I'm Chuck Nice, and of course, this is the show where we answer your questions about the universe. But I don't answer your questions about the universe. The one, the only, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson answers your questions about the universe. What's up, Neil? Quantum physics, that's not my expertise. I just know enough to get by in the universe. So we'll try it, we'll see, it. We'll see how it goes. Just enough quantum physics to get by, huh? <laughs> well, in that case, let's spin that wheel. Indeed, spin that wheel. And Hamed Abdelalim wants to know this. What role does the Higgs boson play in quantum physics? Actually, you could have asked that question about any particle. The, the proton, the neutron, the, uh, the electron, neutrinos, quarks, they are all subject the laws of the quantum. Actually, so is the whole universe, but s the smaller you are, the more you manifest these laws. And so the Higgs boson, it's, it's a quantum particle. And how does the Higgs boson work? It makes a field. And that field grants mass to any particle that moves through it. It's a badass particle. If you have to be a particle, that would be the one to be. And you might ask, how does it actually assign mass? Think of a Hollywood party. If you go to a Hollywood party and nobody knows you, you can just go straight to the bar like that. You have low Hollywood mass. If you are famous and you walk into the party, everyone gathers around you. They want your autograph, they want to take your picture. And you're working towards the bar, but you're moving really slow. You have a lot of inertia, slow inertia, and you can't get through the mass. You can't get through it. So you have high party mass. The Hollywood party is exactly the Higgs field. So what party is it where you sit home and lament your career and cry? What particle is that? That's the neutron. It has no charge, so therefore, it can attract no one. Did, did you say the Nystron? Because damn, Neil, that's, that's kind of harsh, bro. That's rough. <laughs> All right, Neil, you ready for another question? Spin that wheel. Tim Gurr says, do two entangled particles communicate faster than the speed of light? I've heard it's apparently instant. It turns out. One of the rules of quantum physics is that because particles are also waves, if there's a particle on this side of a hill and it can't get across to the other side, the wave function does exist and actually exists in a little bit on the other side of the hill. So the electron can disappear here and reappear there, collapsing the wave function, and the electron would have moved from there to there instantly, basically faster than the speed of light. It's called quantum mechanical tunneling, and it happens all the time. And it is mysterious and beautiful. So what's the hype about tachyons then? Uh, so tachyon is a hypothetical particle named for being very fast. Tachyos is Greek for speed. The tachometer gets the, it's the same root. So a tachyon is a particle, hypothetical particle, that exists only faster than light. And it can go to infinitely high speeds, and the slowest you can ever get this thing to go is the speed of light itself. It turns out this is not violated in Einstein's equations because you're not crossing the speed of light. You're coming into existence faster than the speed of light. And you put that into the equations, it ends up living backwards in time. This is a backwards time traveling particle. Hypothesized, we've never discovered one. So we don't know if they really exist, they probably don't, but it's fun to talk about them because they don't violate Einstein's relativity equations. Perhaps the reason you don't find them is because you're not looking for them in 1955, where you have to go back in time and kiss your mother for, I mean, don't kiss your mother. I'm, you know what? How about we take a break, okay? We'll be back with more Wheel of Science. You know, I love Wix so much for sponsoring Wheel of Science that I'm gonna sing a song about them. 
I use Wix to, okay, I'm not gonna do it, okay? But for real, it's almost 2020 and everyone is looking at everything on their cell phones. You need your website to be perfect on any mobile device and Wix automatically formats everything for mobile, even lets you refine it for a perfect experience. How cool is that? Head to the link in the description and start your site today. That's wix.com slash go slash startalk. <laughs> la la la. Okay, forget it. Welcome back to Wheel of Science. I'm Chuck Nice, and of course, we're here with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil, are you ready for another question? Brady Myers wants to know what technology can be achieved using quantum physics. What you perhaps don't know is that there is no creation, storage, and retrieval of information in this information technology revolution without the exploitation of the quantum. The quantum is all around us. It is in your computers. It is in your storage chips. It is in your memory. It is in everything. It is in the electricity around us. And we did not do really amazing things with electricity until we understood how quantum physics affected it. So you want to ask, what can we do with the quantum? Everything. Damn. All right, Neil, it's caption time. Of course, that's where we take a picture of you and invite our people to give it a caption. And we got hundreds of responses. So you've seen them. Which one do you like? I think my favorite there is I'm just trying to find the place where it says that your opinion is more important than scientific facts. It's snarky. As an educator, that's not how you interact with people, but that's not what caption contests are for. Yeah, well, as a comedian, that's exactly how you interact with people. And by the way, it may be the most polite way that you interact with people. So, good job, man. Time now for our Wheel of Science poll. Make sure that you answer the poll right here. And the question is, would you want to be a quantum superhero like Ant-Man. You know, when I think of being a superhero, I don't think to myself, how small can I make myself? That's just not a thing. Although, growing up as a kid, I did want to be Mighty Mouse, knowing that he was small. Just because he sang opera and saved the women in distress while singing, I just thought that was, that was kind of cool. And a big kind of chest like that. And so I wanted to be Mighty Mouse. But other than that, I'm thinking, I don't, I, don't need, I don't need to hang out with quantum phenomena. I'm very good as a macroscopic object, thank you. Yeah, well, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're in the Mighty Mouse. I'm more of an underdog. I mean, that, like, not even the cartoon character. I'm talking about me personally, man. My life's a wreck, Neil. Well, there you have it. That is our show. As always, we have to say thank you to Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks, Neil. Always here for you, Chuck. You say that now, but at 3 o'clock in the morning, where are you? Where are you? Where I always am at 3 a.m. Looking up at the stars. Oh, God, I'm going to puke. <laughs> Thanks to Wix for sponsoring this episode. If I owned a vacation resort on Proxima Centauri B, I would be telling people about my website that I created on Wix. Unlimited fonts, beautiful templates, search engine optimization, Wix does it all. Upgrade to a premium plan to add things like chat, email, member login, and more. Head to the link in the description and start your site today. That's Wix.com slash go slash StarTalk. That's our show, Neil. Until next time. Keep looking up even when it's 3 a.m. Here I come to save the day.